All right, hey, what's going on, guys? You guys got an asynchronous problem set today, section 4.1 problem set. We're going to do three examples here. We're going to do questions number 16, 22, and 28. And I thank you guys for all the amazing effort and trying to get caught up and up and running, maybe getting used to a new system if you're in seventh block here. And there's a lot of information. There's a lot of stuff set up for you. You got to figure out what it all is and just kind of get start getting used to it. So uh, take a deep breath. Keep getting used to it. You guys are doing great so far. Another thing I'm going to tell you about is that I actually have a website here that has all the list of all upcoming assignments. Don't get overwhelmed by it, but I just up here for organizational purposes. So although I'm gonna do these three problems today as examples, because I think these are maybe a little more complicated problems and maybe you're watching this video just to get up and running or you don't know how to do them, uh, the full list of assignment problems are here and they're also on Google Classroom, right? The, 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 the assignment itself lists all the problems you gotta do or at least attempts, right? Start with, because then you're gonna review for homework uh, with your groups tomorrow during the Jamboard. Okay, so I have this link here if you were to put in this bit.ly uh, slash 2x7cwx, if you type that into your web browser, it would bring you to this page right here, okay? So this is the, uh, the schedule. You might as well bookmark this. It's also listed in Google Classroom, right? If I go to Google Classroom and uh, I check it out here, and at the very top in the course information hub, there's also the semester homework classwork schedule. Look, it's right there, a good old bit.ly link that we have. So if you open it up and you go to today's week, so there's week one, here's week two, this is the assignment you're doing. Kind of a lot of problems, try to go efficiently, try to at least start everyone uh, for the proofs, maybe writing the given and proof statements and drawing the diagram and then saving you some space to hopefully prove it during the jam board tomorrow. But anyways, uh, these are the problems here again, Weird year, maybe this is the kind of thing I would spend two days on in class a normal year, trying to get you en enough stuff in front of you where we can move on to section four two tomorrow. Okay, so good luck with this stuff here. We're doing some of the later ones though. You got several late problems, 20 to 23 and then 28. I think we're gonna start at number 16 actually, which is right here. So some of the later problems. Earlier problems, nice and quick. Hopefully you figure out, you can break down what's happening in those problems. Uh, and then here, if you get stumped on some of these later ones, now you're watching the video. Okay, check this one out here. All right, so let's do number 16 together. We have here number 16, measure of angle DEC equals Y over 4, and measure of angle ECK equals Y plus 60 uh, over 2. Okay, that's great and all, but how is this going to relate to parallelograms? Okay, so I think uh, what's given to us in this problem, and uh, so I didn't snip it when I when I took my screenshot, what's given us to this here is that DECK, quadrilateral DECK is a parallelogram, okay? So this is the symbol they use to denote that it's a parallelogram. So if they use this symbol right here, that means that opposite sides are parallel to one another, of the quadrilateral. Because remember, a, a parallelogram, if it's, we know it's a parallelogram, a parallelogram is a parallelogram if and only if it's a quadrilateral whose opposite sides are parallel to one another. Okay, so by definition of parallelogram, I know this, but perhaps this question is asking us to think about a theorem we know and apply it in this particular scenario. So here we have measure of angle DEC, so maybe we want to grab it real quick. DEC is this one, so this is, right, this is our E right here, so we can think about this as kind of like angle E right here, and this is angle E, right? We have the C up here, we have the D down there, yeah, this is DEC. This one right here, it's this big one right here, this big one here. It's not angle three, angle three is, about, this is part of it, right? It's, it's in the interior of angle DEC. Um, and then we have here, we got to think about angle C right here, okay? Uh, or not angle C, because there's there's more than one angle using C as a vertex. But C is a vertex. E is a point, yep, so we have ray CE. Ray CK makes the sides of that. CE, CK, and we're good to go. So we got that angle, and we're talking about that angle. And what do we notice about those two angles? What do we notice about those two angles? Those two angles, right, we have couple of, right, these are right here, parallel lines, okay, we have a couple parallel lines, and they're cut by a freaking transversal, right, this is a transversal, a transversal is a line that intersects two coplanar lines in different points, so this line here, whoop, whoop, intersects line DE and line KC, and they're, they're planar, right? Those two lines are planar because this is a planar figure. It's just drawn out on a sheet of paper. Remember, if you can draw it on a sheet of paper, it's in that plane that would contain the sheet of paper. So this is the transversal. We have parallel lines that are being cut here. So what are we gonna know about angle DEC and ECK? 
Nope, they're not congruent, right? Because it looks like this top angle here, ECK, is definitely obtuse. This one's definitely acute. Um, parallel lines, these are same side interior angles, okay? Same side. So they're in the interior of these two. These are the, the key parallel lines right here. We got the definition of parallel a gram, right? We know that CK and DE have to be parallel. And then if we have a parallel, a gram, then the same side interior angles, okay? And these are same side interior angles. And we know that they're same side interior angles because this is uh, where E is, and this is where K is here. So DE and CK Right, they would uh, have uh, E and, and K. There would be same side interior angles here. Oh, actually, sorry, uh, 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 E and C. My bad. E and C. Okay, would be same side interior angles there because they're consecutive, right? They're consecutive. If you're consecutive, you're same side interior angles uh, with uh, you're not opposite angles. E and K would be opposite angles. E and C are consecutive angles, right? They they touch each other. They're one of the sides of the parallel the transversal. Anyways, I've said a lot here. Same side interior angles, okay, are supplementary in parallelograms, okay? This is another way I write parallelograms. I have that parallelogram symbol, then I also do the parallelogram here. So same side interior angles are supplementary in parallelograms or consecutive angles in uh, parallelograms are supplementary because, right, if you're consecutive angles in a uh, parallelogram, then you're formed by two parallel lines getting cut by a transversal. And we know if two parallel lines are, are, parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then same side interior uh, uh, same side interior angles are supplementary. Okay, I heard sup there. I meant supplementary. Okay, and what does supplementary mean again? Okay, adds to 180 degrees. Okay, 180 degrees. Okay, so what are we going to know here? Right up top, we have measure of angle DEC, and we know we have a measure of angle ECK to work with. And what are we going to know about that? This angle here this angle here right remember we're talking about these big angles here this big angle here we're going to know they add to 180 so i'm going to go ahead and do that set up an equation okay if i can bring a number in here and set up a math sentence like this this is going to be something i'm going to be able to solve and we're going to get our answer nice and quickly here okay so same side interior angles measure of angle e or measure angle dec we have here is right there measure angle ck is right there and we know they add to 180 so now what i can do is i can take the algebra expression that's set up for this angle here, ECK, which is y plus 60 over 2, and I can take this, this algebra expression I have representing whatever the degree measurement is of uh, angle DEC, and that's y over 4, okay? And I'm going to know y over 4 plus y degrees plus 60 degrees over 2 is going to have to represent 180 degrees. So what I like to call these problems is kind of a geometry and algebra one hybrid type problem, okay, where you're using this is a theorem here, right? In a if in a parallelogram, uh, same side interior or in a parallelogram, consecutive angles are supplementary. So it is technically a theorem. We didn't prove it in this section. We kind of reasoned through it in the classroom exercises. Y over four would be would be the degree representation of that interior angle of the parallelogram, and then this interior angle is y plus sixty over two, and we know that they're supplementary. Okay, if you wanna meet with me to, to go over that, I'd love to meet with you to go over this with you. So now we gotta solve this one. We gotta think, hey, how do I solve a problem like this? Well, we got uh, divided by four, divided by two, this is messy. Um, the way to solve this one, algebra one, maybe went over this, maybe your teacher ran out of time last year to do this. The way to do this here is that if you have a variable being divided by an amount, let's multiply both sides of this by that amount. Okay, so what we can do is we can flex our multiplication property of equality, and I can multiply the left side, which is multiply the left side by four to get rid of that four denominator, and the right side by four. And if I do that, then I'll get rid of all the fractions, I'll bust out the fractions, and I'll be able to solve for y, which is the variable. Okay, so here, this is distributive. I'm, I get, I'm gonna multiply the whole side by four, and the whole other side by four, and that's the multiplication property of equality. If multiplying, equal quantities by an equal quantity, right? By four, one side as we do to the other, is gonna preserve the equality here, okay? So I'm gonna distribute in this four, four times by y over four would be four y over four. But four y over four, the fours would cancel, right? So I would just be left with y, maybe I'll do that in black. Okay, I'll be left with y. Um, what's a little trickier is this here, which is the four on the outside going to the y plus 60 over two. 
So that would be 4 times by y, which would be 4y, plus 4 times 60, which is 240. And that would be over 2. So I'm going to have to divide all that by 2. Okay, So I'm just going to do this together so you can sort of see it a little bit more clearly. Um, but I'm going to simplify a little bit because I'm running a space here. This would end up being right 4 times by y over 4 is just y. 4 times by y plus 60 over 2. Um, I could actually maybe think about this as taking the 4 and dividing it by 2 right away. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2. So I just need to make this 2y plus 120. Okay, Because the 4 does distribute to both of those terms right there okay and if I, if I divide if i do the dividing first then i just multiply by two two times 60 is 120 two times y is 2y and they're ready to go okay uh four times by 180 well let's think here four times 200 would be 800 and four times 20 would be 80 so 800 minus 80 is 720 okay and this is how we're going to simplify and solve this one here y plus 2y is 3y take away the 120 we get 3y equaling, um, take away the 120, equaling 600. So y in this instance is going to equal, not, is it going to equal 200? Did I do, I did something wrong here, I think. No? 200. Is that right? 200. Okay. All right, I got 200. That's a big number for this problem. But maybe we can double check to make sure it's okay. And I think it probably would be okay here. 200 divided by 4 is 50. And then let's see if this is 130, right? You can double check to make sure they're actually supplementary. It should be supplementary if you did it right, okay? 200 divided by four is 50. 200 plus 60 is 260. And 260 divided by two is 130. There we go. So the measure of angle DEC is 50. Measure of angle ECK is 130. And let's see if they're asking for Y in the problem or they were asking for um, getting the measurements of, uh, let's see, ah. Let's see. Solve for value of x or y. Okay, so we're done here. We got our problem here, and uh, measuring 200 is good to go. All right, there we go. Example number one video was doing number 16. Hopefully, you watch this in case you're just like, I don't know where to begin. Hopefully, you find it helpful. We've got more videos coming up. We're going to do number 22, and then finally do number 28 after this. Good luck again today on your asynchronous problem ticket. Uh, not problem, exit ticket, problem set. Bye.